All right. We're rolling. Oh, we're good? I'm primary. You can introduce yourself and say what you're going to do. And then... I'm Steven from Nora Knives, and I'm going to show you how I sharpen a knife. I sharpen everything using stones. I use a grinding wheel, basically water cooled to initially start the bevel just to get a burr. Um, but everything else I do on stones, I'm a strong believer in that a flat stone for a chef knife is pretty much the best edge. All right, so I got a water cooled wheel and all I'm doing is I made sure that this edge is nice and flat so I can go through and I'm gonna bring a burr up on each side. Kind of start it. And I'm just going back and forth, try to evenly sharpen the knife so that the bevel on either side is fairly close to the same. I'm never too worried about it being 100% the same because to be honest, the knives are thin enough that it's not gonna change any type of cutting performance. If it was a thicker knife, then it might. What I'm doing right now is I'm feeling for a burr. And basically I feel a burr all the way across, except for right here. So I'm just gonna put a little more right there. Nice, smooth, really cool. And do it the other way. So now I have a burr all the way across. You can, here. That's the burr. That's not the burr. So you can actually hear the burr as I hit your microphone. And so once I have a burr up, I know at that point, that edge isn't flat. It's sharp enough that the, there's a wire edge on it. So if I was to take this right now and hit it on a piece of leather, it would actually be sharp and it could cut. It's not going to be as sharp as I like to make our kitchen knives. It would be a good working edge. Like if I'm doing an outdoors knife or I'm doing a hard use knife that you're gonna be using on rope and you know, wood and stuff like that. I'd probably leave it right at this finish, polish it and the knife's ready to go. But because it's in the kitchen and we're cutting things like tomatoes and things that like a sharper edge. And to be honest, a, a knife with the coarser edge isn't gonna cut as easily. And really it's a kitchen knife. You want it to cut very easily. I use basically two stones. This is a double-sided stone. It's a diamond stone with 600 grit, 1200 grit. And then I finish on a Japanese 8,000 grit whetstone. I'm a big believer of keeping a stone clean. Um, pretty much every knife I do, I'll come through, I'll scrub the stone just to get all the carbon off of it that was inputted from the last time I sharpened. And then I'll spray it clean. I'll find out what side the burr's on to start. And I always work from the opposite side. So what you're gonna start doing at this point you gonna start working that burr from one side to the other and you work it back and forth, back and forth, progressively finer grits till it falls off. I'll just kind of show you how I do it. So I'll take it and I'll start and I'll walk my fingers back and forth and kind of keep pressure where I'm going back and forth. Now I'm constantly changing kind of direction. Now the reason I do that is because I want to make sure I don't get a low spot in the blade. I want to make sure that that Sharpening is happening nice and even across the whole blade and I feel for the burr. So now I Don't know if you can hear it or not, but the burrs back on this side now it was on that side now It's on this side One of the other things I do is I check to make sure my blade is nice and flat by holding it to the table and Seeing how much light comes through if you see light in a spot that's supposed to be flat You know you need to work that area a little more to get it nice and even that's one of the main culprits of when you're cutting vegetables and you get basically where it doesn't cut all the way through in one little section and you'll have bell peppers with areas that aren't cut. So now that I got the burn on the other side, I'll spray the stone off again to get the carbon off and I'll sharpen from this side. Now, I should have the burrs flipped over. I check it just to make sure I'm getting flatter. Everything looks good. Now I'll flip the stone. So now I am done with the 600, and now I'll go to the 1200. 
Depending on the steel, every steel is a little different. With ABL, it's hard enough and soft enough compared to like M4 or some of the premium steels that I don't have to go through and do another polishing pass, which is what I call when I go back and forth. I'm basically evening out and polishing it. At this point, I can just start working that burr and refining the final finish. So I do push on diamond because I actually think that diamond cuts better in a push cut. And this isn't my final finish. The angle at which I sharpen, it's about my thumb, about three quarters of my thumb height. That gives us 15 to 16 degrees roughly, but really it's just what feels comfortable and you adjust it based on how you use the knife. If you're doing a lot of real delicate cuts, you might want to drop it down, spend a little more time and get that edge a little thinner. If you're doing a lot of heavy work where you're going to be chopping, you're going to want to bring it up and give a little more robust of an edge. So as I'm working it back and forth, I'm basically working that burr from side to side. And if you think of it as fatiguing the edge of the metal to where it actually is going to work and break itself off. At this point, it would probably be sharp enough to cut food, but we're going to go a little sharper. And really with sharpening, the more time you spend on it, the better the finish you get. Okay, so now we're going to move to the Japanese water stone. The diamond stones are always going to be flat. And that's what's kind of nice about diamond stones is they're never going to get a bevel or worn out in the middle. Real stones or Japanese water stones or anything that is that basically wears away as you use it, it's gonna wear unevenly. So I flatten my stones about once a week, depending on what I'm sharpening and then also depending on how it's cutting. And then the big thing I do is I always keep a piece of Scotch-Brite and I, I clean the stone all the time. Every knife I clean it, get all that carbon off so it's a nice fresh stone because I find that gives me the most consistent cut and I really know what the results are gonna be. Where if it starts filling up, you'll see as I sharpen this, it'll start getting black and that's just carbon embedding in the stone and you're not gonna have as consistent of a cut. When I go to this stone, I don't push. The stone's softer so it actually cut the stone and it would dull my edge. So I actually do pulls. And you can see as I do it, I'm getting the carbon and that's basically showing that it's removing metal. And I just keep going back and forth and I slowly work it. I start with heavy pressure and as I kind of feel, I'm, I'm feeling and I'm listening, and as it becomes more consistent and smoother, I know that edge is getting polished. Oh, it's getting there. And then I, I lighten up, and I kind of, one of the tricks I do is I increase the angle just ever so slightly as I lo lighten my pulls. And that's just a way to kind of remove that burr. The final step, put this back in the water. So I use, it's just a piece of leather on a board. Every once in a while, I'll put some compound in it, but really it's just a way to remove the burr and refine the edge just one last time. And then I always, well, I do two different types of tests. Well, three kind of. I kind of feel the edge and I do what Murray Carter calls the three finger test of sharpness. And that's just more feeling if it bites into your skin, which sounds scary, but it actually is once you get used to it, it's not too bad. But once the other thing I do is I check to make sure it shaves. And you kind of see it's the hair is just kind of popping off. And that shows that it, I mean, it's basically a razor blade at that point. And then the other thing I do is I grab a piece of paper. Then I use the paper and that tells me how smooth of an edge it is all the way across. So as you pull, if it catches, that tells you you got an edge, a part of the blade that isn't sharp. So that just kind of tells me that it's ready to use. So that's how you sharpen a knife. One more time. I do like cutting paper, so. Ready? Oh, up? Yep. 
now I do it and I hit. Ready? So, yeah, plenty sharp for anything you need in the kitchen. Thank you.